Hey, it's good to have you back on the channel. Just a quick video. I thought this would be interesting to some folks. No major revelations here, but I thought some folks might want to see inside of a PreSonus 64S Studio Live Series 3 console. They build these to be really modular because obviously a whole bunch of different model numbers fit within this same chassis or a very similar chassis. They have a few different sizes of these. And just thought it'd be interesting to take a look at all the different boards, how they lay things out and how that works here. And we can start with the power supply. Now we've covered these before, taking apart some of the other PreSonus consoles. And I've mentioned this before in a product of this price range. I like that they use a easy to locate power supply that you could replace off the shelf. So down the line, if this is out of warranty, you would not have a hard time finding one of these. By the Meanwell company, this is a 12 volt, 12 and a half amp power supply. So years from now, if you ever have an issue with the power supply, that is not a particularly difficult part to source. So that's mounted to the bottom of the case. I've got this console flipped upside down. Obviously, if you can tell what it looks like, yeah, you can see the sides there. So that is the bottom of the case and the power supply is the only thing mounted there. So it looks like there's just a positive and negative 12 volt rail on this power supply. Uh, test point wise, there's tons of stuff here labeled uh, on the test points. There's stuff for the clock up here, data lines. I don't see any other voltages. I see some ground points, but the other voltages could be silk screened on. Oh no, there we go. There's a 3.3 volt uh, line right there next to the ground. And uh, so there, there's different voltages being broken out on the various boards from the 12 volt supply and those different voltages are being handled locally. So again, with the modular design, I'm not gonna disassemble this all the way. These are obviously uh, pretty complicated and I don't really uh, see a whole lot of value in undoing all of everything uh, just to see the other side of this board where the faders are gonna be mounted. And that's, there's a little motors right there you can see for the motorized faders. One really neat thing about the way this appears to be put together is that the chassis is in two different halves. So there's the top half here and then there's the fader uh, half here down at the bottom. And that actually bolts or screws together using screws along this seam here. And if you were to undo these side panels, which are replaceable, they have some parts available for these, all the common parts for the studio live consoles, things like uh, input power, uh, receptacles, switches, side plates, uh, accent markers, pots, faders, all that kind of stuff. You can find most of those parts on full compass and you can just buy them yourself and do repairs. I believe they also have the fader motors and a number of other common parts throughout the whole range. Uh, I'm not really sure what the availability is on things like these individual boards if you were to have an issue down the line because Full Compass does have some boards in stock that you can just buy. And it would be interesting to know how far into something like a 64S you could go doing repairs without being an authorized repair center or having a warranty. But they definitely do seem to have quite a bit available in way of uh, parts and uh, just simple replacements and things that you could need if you were using these regularly. And that's better than can be said for a lot of bigger manufacturers selling uh, parts directly to the end user. So really cool there. So that's just a quick look inside the 64S for anybody that's interested. Now let's see if I can put it all back together and make it work again, that would be really nice. And then if we have a little more time, I will pop open this Switchback M8RX as well, and we can take a quick look at what's going on inside of this together. Not too much to do. Uh, reconnect the uh, line cord power inputs and reconnect a couple jumpers going back to the various boards and we should be back up and running.
Yeah, perfect. So the 64S works again. Let's take a look inside the M8RX and see what's going on. This one's a little more interesting being PoE or power over ethernet that we're gonna see a little bit going on inside with the power being broken out for the phantom power, for the networking, and then also for the mixer and headphone amp. There's a lot going on inside here just from the power rails alone. So let's take a look and see what we got. So you can see just how packed everything is inside the M8RX. There is a ton going on here, all being powered over ethernet. So you see these different voltage indicators here showing us the various voltage rails that are supplying all those different components. And usually the first thing you wanna do when you're troubleshooting electronics, if you're having an issue, is to measure those voltages, measure the various rails, and make sure you are seeing voltage where you expect it. So to be able to pop a little belt pack unit like this open with uh, four screws and then visually verify those various rails for the different components is really neat. That's a really nice time-saving troubleshooting uh, add-on there, and you don't even need to get a meter out. So from each one of these rails, you could then track down a fault or something else down the line further from there that is not receiving power, and you should be able to solve for whatever component happens to be giving you an issue. Super densely packed inside the M8RX with the Audinate chip sitting right there in the middle. And it's really cool seeing more of the Audinate chips make their way into boxes like this. If you haven't watched the video I just did on this one that goes over all the functionality, definitely check that out. I've also done a bunch of videos recently about the 64S. So these are just two. Uh, wanted to take apart real quick and have a look and show what's inside. Some folks really enjoy that uh, quick look inside there. So be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave any comments or questions you might have about any of the stuff I've mentioned in the video uh, down below, and I'll do my best to get you answers to those. I do read all the comments and try to respond to them as much as I can. So that's it for this time, and I'll be back real soon with another video.